Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn on subtopic of point three, neurons and synapses. I hope you are ready with your pen and paper as usual. And let's do this. Okay, let's look at the learning standard before we begin. So the learning standard here for today is that you should be able to draw and label structure of a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. Okay, we have the dendrite, myelin sheet, axon, node of Ranvier, and also cell body. So all that you should be able to draw and label. And then you should be able to analyze the function of each type of neuron in impulse transmission, explain the structure and function of synapses, and also explain the transmission of impulse across a synapse. All right. Okay, the nervous system is made up of millions of nerve cells, okay, known as neurons. Neurons transmit information in the form of electrical signals known as nerve impulses to other neurons, glands, and also muscles. Okay, now the basic structure of neuron, okay, consists of a cell body, axon, dendrite, myelin sheet, a node of Ranvier, and a synaptic terminal with ends in a bubbles enlargement. Okay, we call it as a synaptic knot. Now, there are two types of nerve fibers that extends from the body. We have the axon, okay, which transmit impulses away from the cell body. Okay, and the dendrites transmit impulses towards the cell body. Okay, now let's look at the uh, structure. So now, cell body contains nucleus. So it integrates signals and coordinates metabolic activities. Okay, that is the cell body. The dendrites are trade-like extension, <coughs> okay, trade-like extension from the cell body and it carry impulses towards the cell body. Then we also have axon, okay, the axon is a thin and long fiber from the cell body which carry impulses away, okay, the coat here is away from the cell body, surrounded by myelin sheet to protect and insulate the axon, okay, myelin sheet as act as a protection okay and insulation for the axon and also help to speed up the conduction of nerve impulses okay and myelin sheet has many gaps okay that gaps is not uh, of radian okay now then we have the axon terminal okay or we call it as synaptic terminals which are the ending of an axon okay they have small swelling called synaptic knobs okay and they transmit signal to muscle cells gland cells or the dendrites of another neurons okay transmission is passed from one neuron to another we will see later okay and then we have the myelin sheet okay a reputation is that it protects and insulates the nerve fiber okay and also to speed up impulses the node of Ranvier is to actually facilitate rapid conduction of the nerve impulses okay it's really fast so we need the myelin sheet and the node of Ranvier okay so myelin sheet uh, is also actually surrounded by squam cells huh, which helps to uh, transmit impulses faster. Okay now there are three types of neuron okay which are the sensory neuron okay or known as the afferent neuron, relay neurons or known as the interneurons and the motor neurons which is known as the efferent neuron. You have seen a little bit in the last subtopic okay what is the afferent neuron what is the efferent neuron that helps to transport, uh, transmit impulses. Okay, now both sensory and motor neuron they are located outside of the central nervous system. Okay, whereas the cell body of the sensory neuron is located in the dorsal root ganglion, whereas the cell body of the motor neuron is located in the gray matter of a spinal cord. Okay, and relay neuron is actually located in the uh, central nervous system. Okay, but the cell body is located specifically in the gray matter of the uh, central nervous system. Okay, now let's look at this. Huh? There are types of neurons. Okay, the afferent neuron or the sensory neuron, they transmit nerve impulses from receptor to the central nervous system. Interneuron is from afferent to efferent neuron. Okay, and the motor neuron is transmit impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors. So I repeat, huh? the uh, afferent neuron from the receptor to the central nervous system. So uh, the interneuron transmit impulses from the afferent neuron to the efferent neuron. 
and the efferent neuron transmit impulses from the central nervous system to the effector. Okay, so this is basically in the uh, brain or the spinal cord. Okay, this is in the CNS, gray matter. Alright, <clears throat> now let's look at the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron, okay, or the efferent neuron, they move away from the central organ or a point and they relay messages from the receptors to the brain or spinal cord, the CNS. Okay, and motor neuron, the same thing is that it is moving towards the central organ or the point, okay, to relay message from brain or spinal cord to the muscles and organs. So, this is the uh, sensory and motor neuron. But if you look at the picture diagram, uh, okay, uh, for the uh, sensory neuron, the cell body is at the middle. It's uh, in between the myelin sheet. Okay, the then uh, synaptic knob uh, is towards the synaptic knob here. But uh, the efferent neuron, they have the cell body and the dendrites here. Okay, and then they have the terminal here. So, if there is a difference in the structure of uh, the structure of the neurons itself. Alright, whereas interneuron, okay, interneuron, they do not have a long axon. They have a very short axon. Okay, they relay messages from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron. Okay, and they make up the brain and the spinal cord. Alright, the grey and the white matter. So, the difference is that uh, efferent neuron, they have long axon and uh, efferent neuron, they have short axon. Alright, there is no receptor in uh, efferent neuron and there are receptors at the efferent neuron because efferent neuron transmit impulses from the receptor. Okay, the cell bodies of an efferent neuron, okay, they have dendrites and the cell bodies are at the side of efferent neuron and they don't have dendrites. Okay, there are many short dendrons in efferent neuron and there are no, there is only one long dendron eh, in uh, efferent neuron. Okay, the transmission pathway of information. So this one you have seen in the previous lesson also. So, if you know that the stimulus, okay, from the external environment, example, the stimulus is the sound, they are detected by the sensory receptor, okay, and they transform into the nerve impulses and the nerve impulses are sent through the sensory neuron okay sensory neuron to the brain the cns huh? and then when it is interpreted here we have the interneuron here okay or the relay neuron okay that uh, gets the information from the efferent and send the information through the efferent neuron so now through the motor neuron okay to the effector and the effector is that the hand muscle produces a response to go and pick up the cord Okay, so you have the uh, transmission pathway. Okay, the neurons, they do not touch each other. Okay, they are the direction, if you can see, efferent neuron to interneuron and to the efferent neuron. But in between, they do not touch each other. There is a gap. Okay, and this gap is known as a synapse. Okay, so neurons are not uh, in direct contact with each other. Okay, so there's a narrow synaptic gap, okay, between the synaptic knob and the axon terminal, terminal and the dendrite or the cell body of the next neuron, which is called a synapse. So a synapse is actually a narrow synaptic gap, which is about 20 nanometer only, okay, that a nerve impulses has to cross to reach the next neuron at the neuron to neuron junction. Okay, so function of the neuron is that it, it enables the information transmission of information from a neuron to another okay and from one neuron to the muscle cell or to a gland okay so this is to actually ensure that nerve impulses travel in one direction only okay a uh, nerve impulses which is electrical uh, in nature they cannot directly cross the synapse so a nerve impulse from the sending neuron move across the synapse chemically by releasing neurotransmitter if you look at the diagram you can see there is neuro transmitter okay there are uh, some of the neurotransmitter we can call it as a uh, example of neurotransmitter is a uh, acetylcholine okay acetylcholine example eh, of a neurotransmitter so it has to be chemically uh, transformed first okay we have acetylcholine we have noradrenaline serotonin dopamine okay another example is uh, dopamine okay also example of a uh, neurotransmitters okay okay let's look at the transmission of information across synapse now a nerve impulses reaches 
the axon terminal. This will stimulate the vesicle in the synaptic knob to fuse with the presynaptic mem membrane. So the synaptic vesicle will fuse with the presynaptic membrane here. All right, and then this will release uh, neurotransmitters. Okay, neurotransmitters, uh, neurotransmitters which will diffuse across the synaptic pair. So there are neurotransmitters here. Okay, that will diffuse into the synaptic cleft, and the mitochondria here will provide energy. Okay, ATP in the form of ATP. So when the neurotransmitter reaches and bind with the receptor on the postsynaptic membrane. Okay, there are uh, receptors here. So the neurotransmitters will bind at the postsynaptic membrane. Okay, so a new uh, nerve impulse is actually generated. So the newly generated nerve impulse will continue its movement in the dendrite okay, of a receiving neuron. So after the neurotransmitter delay, uh, relay its message, it is then rapidly broken down by an enzyme or taken up again by the synaptic terminal and recycled. So all the neurotransmitter has to be removed from the synaptic cleft so that all the action of the synapse can be stopped. Okay, from one neuron to another. Okay, now let's look at a summative practice 12 of okay, question 6 from the textbook. All right, now, figure 2A shows a part of a neuro motor neuron and 2B shows a cross-section of a synaptic knot. Now, they say name parts, okay, parts label V, T and U. So, we have the V here. V is definitely mitochondria, right? And then we have the U, which is the synaptic vesicles and the T, okay, this is a part, huh? Not you don't tell as neurotransmitter, we say as a, this is the synapse. Okay, now, name the chemical substance in you. So, the chemical substance in you will be the neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter. Okay, these are the chemical substance. Examples, dopamine, serotonin, and so on. Okay, now, the synaptic knob, C, yeah? synaptic knob contains a lot of V. What is V? Mitochondria. Okay, so what is the function of V? Definitely to provide energy. Okay, to, uh, how do I say? Mm, to provide energy. Okay, uh, to provide energy uh, for electrical impulse transmission. Okay. Now, uh, next question. Draw an arrow that shows the direction of impulse flow along axon S. Where is axon S? Okay, if you look at axon S, is here. So now draw an arrow. So the direction would be, oops, let me erase this for you. Okay, so the direction would be, okay, so direction of impulse from nearby neurons, okay, and then towards so this is your arrows. Okay. Now explain. Question E. Explain why does transmission of impulse okay, involve pathway of impulse through T uh, synapse? Why? Hmm? Any uh, answers that you can think of? Okay, the impulses involving a true T because it's actually to continue, okay, the transmission. To continue the transmission of electrical impulses to the next neuron, okay, upon reaching the synaptic No, To continue the transmission, transmission of electrical impulses through the next neuron upon reaching the synaptic knob. Okay, how a transmission impulse occurs? Okay, so you have to explain the transmission across the synapse. Okay, where the synaptic vesicle will secrete the neurotransmitter that diffuse across the synapse and attach to the receptor proteins on the receiving neuron of the dendrite. Okay, and the dendrite is then stimulated to trigger a nerve impulse that is carried by the receiving neuron to the effector. Alright. And last question F. Based on figure 2A and 2B, explain why transmission of impulses through a neuron occurs in one direction only. 
So, impulse transmission occurs in one direction only because after being secreted from synaptic vesicles, the neurotransmitter will actually move across the synapse and fuse with the receptor of the next neuron. So, therefore, the impulse transmission takes place only in one direction. Okay? Okay, there is a video here. I will share the link in the comments, uh, I mean, in the description box below. So, you can go and have a look at the video and come back to this lesson. Okay, let's look at the next question, which is summative practice 12, question 7. Now, explain the effect of stimulant drugs and sedative drugs on the transmission of impulse through the synapse. So, now, what will happen if we consume drugs or any other kind of stimulants? So, stimulants, for example, cocaine, okay, they prevent um, the removal of neurotransmitter that stimulant, uh, that will stimulate excitement, okay. So, this will produce an intense euphoric uh, feeling followed by depression. So, these stimulants also will increase impulse transmission that cause, causes increases in the heartbeat and also respiration rates. So, depressants such as uh, heroin will actually retard and slow down the activities of the nervous system. So, when this happens, this slows down the production of the neurotransmitters, transmitters, which will then actually uh, reduce the rate of heartbeat and also respiration. Okay, so this individual will actually uh, experience temporary excitement and uh, satisfaction, satisfaction. Then it will just be depressed. Okay, so we are done. So, uh, as usual, go home and do, uh, go home, you are at home. Okay, please do formative practice 12.3. Okay, 12.3, uh, the first question is that, what is the function of motor neurons? Okay, uh, why do synaptic knots have, uh, contain a lot of mitochondria? Already covered. How are electrical impulses transmitted through the synapses? Also covered. And predict what will happen. Okay, to the transmission of impulses if the neuron does not have myelin sheet. Now, you know what is the function of myelin sheet. So, if you don't have that, what will happen? So, you should be able to answer this question. Answers will be provided in the description box below. But only check them after you have done. Okay. Alright. So, with that, we are done. I will end my video here. And thank you for watching. And please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel.